Good afternoon, Malta. It's great to be here. And this afternoon, I'm going to talk. I'm going to change the subject, if that's OK. I'm going to change it to position yourself for digital success. I guess people are here for many different reasons. It may be that you want to make money for the future. You've got an idea. It may be that you're here today because your company sent you, and maybe you don't even want to be here. Hopefully, that's not the case. It may be here because you don't want to miss out. But whether you're gamers, you're lawyers, whether you're accountants, or whether you're like me in the financial industry, I think we all know that the world's changing super quickly. And it's exciting. It's exciting because there are opportunities that every single one of us can take advantage of us. Today, OK, I'm going to be talking more about marketing because that's what I do at the end of the day. So I believe that. Many people have fantastic ideas. They have a brilliant idea, but sometimes it gets lost in the implementation. Many people decide that they've got an app or they've got a new technology, but do they know how to use that effectively? You see, you don't need just the idea, but actually, you need people that can market the idea as well. In my industry, we need to produce good financial fintech. That's exciting. We need to be able to give advice to our high net worth clients. But ideas are no good unless we can reach the people. And how do we do that? Well, I'm going to talk about how exactly we do that today. But let me just say to you that do you realize there's lots of people competing. I want to give you an edge so you can beat those people. There are 4 million current apps available in the App Store and Google Play. OK, I don't know if you know the numbers like I've looked at them, but there are 6,000 new apps every day. And people go, I've got an idea. And you know, sometimes the shame of it is that it's a fantastic idea. But an idea, of course, on its own is not enough. We know that fewer than 0.01% will actually make money financially. OK, so how do we take advantage? Because there is a massive opportunity over the next 10 years. I definitely don't want to depress you. I just want us to realize that great ideas on their own aren't enough unless we also learn how we connect and how we market. I believe the world will change more in the next 10 years than it has in the last 100 years. And if you think about that, some people will go, really? But then you think about the last 10 years and imagine that it's actually accelerating. And when you realize it's accelerating at the rate that it is, you'll actually appreciate that, yes, the world could well change more in the next 10 years than it has in the last 100. We look back at the past. And some of you may remember, like I do, Blockbuster. Anybody remember Blockbuster? Yeah, that was on every high street, right? Do you know the CEO of Blockbuster? He was offered Netflix. It was 50 million for Netflix. Blockbuster was making more money in late returns than the price of Netflix. He turned it down. You know why he turned it down? He said it's too slow to download films. He'll never take off. And anyway, people like coming in our store on a Friday night. There's a buzz. Of course, Blockbuster went broke. And Netflix today is worth billions. Wow. Who had a BlackBerry? I had a BlackBerry. OK, 51% of mobile phones were Blackberries. They actually had a bigger market share than Apple. Can you imagine that? You know, today we go, everybody's got Apple, right? OK, and yet it's not the large percentage that BlackBerry had. And yet today, how many mobile phones do they sell? You're right, it's zero. The truth is that you have to evolve, right? You have to develop. And if there's nothing else you gain from my 10 minutes, hopefully you just remember the evolution. You may also remember that you need to pivot. 
Because, do you know, every single company, every single fintech company, every single company that's successful today actually had to change. They didn't start as they intended. One exception, Google. It's the only one. I'm going to give you some exceptions, and you may remember some. Viagra. I knew that would grab some attention. Anybody know how Viagra started? OK, well, it was actually to lower blood pressure. They did some trials. And funny enough, they found it didn't lower blood pressure, but the guys didn't want to give it back. OK, they realized maybe there was something else. They changed direction. You look at Western Union. That was delivering telegrams. Today, of course, they charge for sending money somewhere else in the world. And many of you would argue with fintech and crypto, perhaps Western Union may need to change again. You look at the past and you look at Twitter. It was actually started for podcasts. Wasn't successful then, but maybe Twitter would have been for podcasts today. Maybe the wrong time. But they pivoted, they changed. And apart from Donald Trump using Twitter, uh, that's not a good thing, not for the financial industry anyway, but it's certainly a useful platform. And YouTube, do you know how YouTube started? It was actually a dating site. Imagine. Sounds horrific to me. You do a little movie, put it on there, trying to date someone. No wonder they had to change. I would argue that you all need to look at success, whoever you are in the room, because all of us need to take advantage of the next 10 years. For myself, I looked at digital currencies. And I believe that ultimately, digital currencies would be successful. So I started an app called Crypto, Devere Crypto. And I was shocked to realize that I needed to have an influencer that would suggest my product to other people. John McAvee, there's a name for you, right? He wanted 120,000 for a tweet. And there were other guys charging $20,000 just to put you on their newsletter. OK, well, I realized in order to be successful in fintech, I either had to employ people that were going to be able to get what I believe are great products out to the marketplace, or I myself was going to have to be an influencer. And I've been working at it for 12 months. So I want to share that briefly with you. Last week, I was named as the 29th most influential Brit. OK, well, in truth, I've been trying for 12 months because I realize that certainly in my industry, I need to be an influencer. But I also realized that all of us already are influencers. You think about your children. You're an influencer, right? They're teachers, whether you like it or not. They're influencers too. So actually, we're all influencers, whether we like it or not in our world. The truth is, we need, whether it's by word or by voice, need to grow our networks. There are people listening to this, but I can hear the crowds outside, right? They're networking. Are they right? OK, or should they be listening in here too? OK, you'd make your own mind up. But certainly, I would agree that you need to be marketing and building your connections, whether it's online or offline. And I would actually argue all of us have to do both if we're going to be successful. There are many platforms. You look at Facebook. In fairness, people actually don't realize that a lot of successful people are on Facebook. OK, I actually know from my own clientele, we've got a lot of people in the banking industry who use Devere services, very high net worth individuals. They're actually not on LinkedIn, surprisingly. They don't want to be networked. They don't want a job. They want to be headhunted, if anything. But they're on Facebook because they're in a cycling club or something similar. Don't miss the opportunity for your company and perhaps yourself to use those mediums. We look at LinkedIn. There are now 6 
100 million people on LinkedIn. Okay, just imagine. If you reach 30,000 contacts, like I have now, by working at it, if you send out a message, you're hitting 30,000. If they've got 10 contacts each, that's 300,000. And if they've got 100 each, that's 3 million. Okay, don't forget your connections. Remember, it's good content, good content, good content, hook with your services. And that's what everybody should be doing. Good content, good content, add value, add value to people, give to people, and then show them something that perhaps could benefit from your services. Apply it, it makes a difference. We look indeed at YouTube, and today YouTube is growing faster than Google searches. So I'm looking at YouTube and saying, wow, the growth on that could be that people search more on YouTube than they do on Google. Okay, you say, you're joking. No, think about it. When you buy a new appliance, do you go and that, take that new appliance and go to Google when you want to work it out? You don't, right? You actually go to YouTube and you want someone explaining it. I actually believe that all of us need to be aware of that and can take advantage of it. I would be amiss as a marketing guy, at least partially a marketing guy, if I didn't mention our own products. We have Catalyst, which is a low-cost savings app. We also have, as a company, a range of apps that we use. Okay, I also, of course, are on YouTube myself, and you're welcome to follow. But may I just say, the big thing is, we've got 10 awesome years to take advantage of. Before we know it, it's going to be 2020. We've got 10 weeks to go, working weeks. That's five days a week. That's 50 days. And then it's 2020. Okay, when it gets to the end of 2020, are you going to be ready for 2030? Hopefully, some of the ideas I've shared with you will be of benefit. And you're welcome to message me and, of course, link up. Thanks for your attention. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome summit. Appreciate it.